A few years before he died, Georgia did an interview with the U.S. Forest Service. Southern Oregon Historical Society has the transcript, and I'm going to share views he gave on Indians, religion, and evolution. This is a photo of Rose Ampler, a Shasta woman, with two unidentified men. It is one of SOHS's few photos of Indian women in the 1900s. I included it because George commented on relationships and intermarriage. He said that people still treated a white man fairly if he married an Indian woman. In George's view, people didn't look down on a man for that, but they ostracized white women who married Indian men. His Aunt Ida was affected by this, of course. Her son, Lauren, may also have felt some impact because Fred Frayn was his stepfather and a half Shasta Indian. SOHS has a memoir written by Lauren, though, that indicates he considered Fred a father and he missed both his parents after they died. My aunt married Fred Frayn. He was a Shasta, but you see, hell, they wasn't welcome at a dance or gatherings or anything. I knew old Sergeant Sambo. He was a hundred and two when he died. Yeah, I knew him well. Sergeant Sambo was quite a guy. Nice old fellow. Real nice. He was more talkative for one thing, and he liked the white people. Most Indians didn't care for whites, you know. They had kind of a bad feeling toward the white because white man whipped him. They had him under their thumb. But Sergeant Sambo was more or less raised around white people, and he was one that liked white people. Sergeant was a cook by trade. I've ate his cooking many a times. He could make a nice big cake just as good as anybody. He was just a good cook. That was his business. He started out buckarooing, but got hurt, so took up cooking. He didn't drink. A lot of them Indians drank, you know, but he didn't drink. And he associated quite a lot with Indians or with white man. He never was married. His father was a chief of the Shasta Indian tribe, and Sergeant was what they call a medicine man. When I was a boy, there were several Indians lived along the Klamath River near where Copco is now located. Those Indians would go to the Skookum Gulch area every spring to dig apals. The women would dig apals and other eatable herbs and plants, while the men would hunt for game and soon have jerk venison and venison cooked on a campfire. And it was good, too. So was the apals. I know, for I ate with them more than once when I was a little boy. What a fine country this must have been before the white man came and killed and destroyed all the good things the Indians had. The fish and game, the bunch grass, and all the rest is gone. The Indians, too. When I was a little boy, I heard Indian Tom say, white man, crazy. Kill him, dear. No, eat him. Fall Creek is mentioned many times in George Wright's journals. His grandparents lived on it, and later his aunt and uncle, Ida and Fred Frayne. During his interview, George told a version he knew of an altercation that occurred between Indians and white men in a cave above Fall Creek Falls in the early years. George knew a Shasta woman who told him she had been in the cave when she was seven years old. Apparently, Indians had been killing and eating cattle. They killed three white men, too. The whites in the area requested help from troops at Fort Jones. The troops, along with additional volunteers, headed for the area in January. They camped at Camp Creek near the Klamath River and gave Camp Creek its name. Then they named Jenny Creek after one of their donkeys, also called Jennies, drowned there. The white men arrived below the icy falls of Fall Creek. One Irish man from Hornbrook made his way up the cave and the Indians killed him. The man's partner followed, and the Indians killed him, too. I'm not sure when the white men below the falls brought in a cannon or howitzer that they fired into the cave. The Shasta woman's story is that the Indians had snuck out during the night and escaped. George said the white man's story was different. They claimed they caught at least some of the Indians and were taking them back to Fort Jones. Volunteers got into an argument, though, and they killed the Indians instead and covered the bodies. George said that the woman he knew liked to tell this story. She was proud that the Shasta had fooled the white men. This is a photo of a person named Ben Wright, who was well known in Oregon as an Indian fighter. 
Some believed he was brave and fair to Indians. Others considered him to be violent toward Indian men and also Indian women. George Wright definitely shared the latter opinion. He got a big fee to going. I guess he poisoned a lot of Indians. He did that for meanness, I guess, to trap them. He's good to them in order to catch them off their guard. He was a mean, mean man, Indian hater. He did the Indians wrong, caused them a lot of trouble. As far as I know, he was no relation to me. I just read and heard about him. That Modoc war out there, according to the old timers, was all the white man's fault. I am sure many people would call the Soda Mountain Wilderness area God's country. In George's time, it definitely was not church country, though. George did not remember any ministers, let alone churches in his area, and he said he had never been to a church in his life. Well, what I call God is everything. You and me and the trees and the planet and everything all combined together. God. It isn't an individual man. Everything is God. I think, well, hell, what can a church do for me? Yeah, we all have rules and beliefs, including myself. I try to picture things and have certain kind of beliefs. My own invention. Whether it's soul or whether there's anything or not, I couldn't say. I think that I may be wrong, you know. I'm not always right, even though my name is right. <laughs> but I believe in evolution, and I find a lot of people that do. The atmosphere, chemicals, and whatnot. I'm not educated enough to name all these things, all combined. Was just right and started some bugs or insects or some things, and they kept developing from there. Adapted to the new environment, whatever you want to call it. They just come from there and growed up through thousands and probably millions of years to what we are now, and that isn't saying an awful lot. 